Well, Carillion is an indirect amyloplasty that uses the coronary sinus to indirectly affect the mitral valve regurgitation by reducing the annular diameter, reducing secondarily left atrial and left ventricular volumes in order to decrease uh, the amount of uh, functional mitral regurgitation. Carillion is a very important enhancement of the toolbox of a lot of different tools to treat FMR. It is specifically useful in younger patients, earlier in FMR, and in um, flexible exercise uh, dependent uh, aggravation of functional mitral regurgitation as well as mitral regurgitation that is caused by atrial dilatation cause of the anatomic position of the coronary sinus. So as an analplasty that indirectly involves the mitral valve, it leaves all further options open, like leave the therapy and replacement as well as surgery. Carillion over the time has uh, decreased the load and burden of V-wave increases in the left atrium. Uh, it induces uh, remodeling of both the left atrial size and the left ventricular size. And uh, by implanting over time the full treatment effects, can it be appreciated at one to six months' time? And they're persistent over one year. Patients encounter a better exercise capability, longer six minute walks, and less symptoms like neurocardio association class improvements. The Carillion trial, uh, the, once the completed reduced FMR trial, as well as the ongoing uh, US trial now on reducing FMR is the first uh, sham controlled uh, double arm uh, evaluation of a valve disorder and uh, valve treatment. I think it's uh, good to see that we are treating different treatment cohorts to the co-op trial that we're treating patients earlier, that we see that a treatment effect can be seen in lesser degrees of MR. It's, so it's not only four plus MR that should be treated. And I think all these new variables and attestations add to the full spectrum of the toolbox approach to the functional mitral regurgitation. Even though it was partially by random, um, the lesser degrees of um, uh, treatment and severity levels of functional MR treated in reduced FMR, and making it actually more difficult to show a treatment effect for the study, but still having a positive result in the study outcome, uh, showed us that we should not only concentrate our view on the later stage of FMR, but also on the prevention of progression. And I think one of the most important messages that has also been seen in the co-op trial is that the improvement is not only by direct remodeling and improvement, but by an improvement versus the control group. Mm -hmm. which is very important to see and also a very important answer in this uh, trial has been that we have an overall very low mortality rate at 30 days uh, in all the ongoing trials which is around two percent we know that functional mr in heart failure is a devastating disease uh, reaching for um, mortality rates at one year between 10 to 20 percent, having mortality rates of about 50 percent or higher at five years time. So we know that these are dependent on the amount of functional regurgitation, regurgitation volume, but also on the dimensions of the ventricle. So inducing a positive remodeling, instead looking at the ongoing negative remodeling of the natural course of the disease, I think is a very important interception into the disease process and should be initiated earlier than currently been done.